Hail to the king, baby. Hello, everyone. This All is right. the GBB podcast, or also known as the Gaming Bounty Board podcast. And this is my friend, Hiak Show. Is that how you say it? Or Hayak Show? Nailed it. Hiak Show the first time? First okay, one. cool, 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 yes. cool. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you watched the uh, my last channel update. No, I don't think you've watched that, have you? Have you watched Might my have, last channel update? Actually, last uh, channel update you did. I've been watching you for quite a lot lately, so maybe I did. I don't know if you have or not, but I shouted you out in that video. And a lot of other people. And I have so not. I think then you would appreciate sorry about the that. things that I say in that video. But not just like, it's it's like a kind of a broad thing that I say. But it was kind of a very heartfelt video that I made. Um, of, of an oh, update for I'm my sorry channel. I didn't see it. It's okay. You got you got time. There it is. I missed it. I watched the one after. Death yeah, and yeah, Despair. Yeah. It's, and it's I watched hard. the I, one before. I release videos <laughs> too often, so I'm sure it throws it off. Nah, I'm sorry about that, but cool, I'm going to watch it later. All good. Um, Anyway, so usually I start this off by just asking my guests, what have you been playing recently? That's actually a very interesting question. (laughs) No, it's it's actually a very interesting question. Don't you find that because you're a content creator as well, you tend to play less games these days than you used to? Well, In some way? It's so, well, yes and no. I mean... I have a bad thing of kind of hopping around games too much, right? Same. So I, I buy games, and then I'll play this game, then play that game, then play this game, play that game, and I'll just hop around, and then I have a backlog, and blah, blah, blah. Now, obviously, I've beaten way more games in the past as a kid in high school and so on because you have more time. True. But as a father yeah. and having a job and so on and so forth, it makes it a lot easier, or a lot harder to... Uh, to play through all your games, old or new. And there's always so many cool, especially this year, there's too much coming out. There's so much you want to play. Oh, there's so much coming out. And I can't afford to get it all, obviously. But I've bought a couple games this year. Um, but I can't afford to get it all. Um, no, but likewise. I, I, did, I did finally beat something recently, though. I did beat Diablo 4, so. Knock that there off There we go. List. Well, actually, that, that's, a fa- that's a fair comment there. So I started uh, this month. I, ca- I, went on, I went on the trip recently to Europe, my first time ever in Europe, and quite amazing. But I, when I got back, I was like, wait, what was I playing before I left? So I had to go. I went through that. And I actually i am quite a big fan of RTS and world builders like Minecraft and RimWorld and things like that. So yeah, I went yeah. and I looked there and started a new RimWorld game. RimWorld is fantastic. So you can get immersed and lost in there for like – days I, I actually it, had a, a oh highly recommend the thing is you know it frustrates me about RimWorld because of where it started to where it is now mm-hmm. it looks so intimidating for people that are on the outside looking in but fortunately i was in there early and i had a map once upon a time and one of my characters died and he uh, she was married to one of the other characters and he freaked out and went got depressed and then just started breaking shit and then i had to exile him and i just basically sat there in front of my computer this was now me back in south africa and i just rage quit for like three months i was like fuck this game can i swear fuck this game i yeah, can't yeah, yeah, i can't play right now this is this is ridiculous i need to take a walk i need to find other things and i rage quit for like quite a while but i, I went yeah. back recently it's actually still such a fun game if you can get into it and um other than that um, I have a very strange mother. Um, I, go, go, go with me on this. Go with me on this. I have a very strange mother, okay? Um, she sat me down at the ripe age of, I think I was, we worked out the other day, eight, something mm-hmm. like that, sat me down on her lap and started playing Doom with me, okay? And say with me. I was playing Doom with her. Hey, she played I Doom. I would not use strange, movie. okay? I would use badass. You know? That is. That's not strange <laughs> at all. She brought me up. She brought me up well. And hey, look, I was, um, I was so, playing God of War younger than that, so don't worry. <laughs> There you go. There you go. And uh, she messages me. So we we live in different countries now, unfortunately. But she still tries to make an effort when it comes to my birthday. And she's like, my boy, what do you want for your birthday? I was like, nothing. We're very happy here. Everything's well. She's like, what games do you want? I'm like, "Uh, you know, if you like, you can go look at my Steam wish list. There's a few in there, you know, please don't spend money and whatever. So then she surprises me out of nowhere with Diablo 4 Deluxe Edition. Nice. Just just boom and i'm like well thanks oh, yeah. that's amazing so i'm a big fan of like diablo maybe not so much Dude, me too uh, me too who is it you know the company but the game it's like the the world and things like that right um, yeah that's a whole amazing. that's a whole ordeal that's kind of it's kind of one of those scenarios that's similar to the whole discourse around hogwarts legacy to some degree um i yeah. don't want to get into either of those but 
I will say Fair that they're enough. both very interesting. I just like to avoid politics and opinions on such I things concur. on anything that I do, which is safest. <laughs> just that brief, I follow you. I know brief what you're saying. mention is, that's all you get. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. But hey, so I'm playing Diablo 4 right now. Yeah. Really having a good time. I'm, I've just, just started, I think, this past week when I got in. And I like it. It's it's good oh, time, yeah. actually. And yeah. I've just figured out how to do corp, Corpse Explosion, so that makes yeah. me happy. So, yeah, I played through <laughs> as a... Uh, rogue which is very similar to my favorite in diablo 3 which is the demon hunter um oh nice I man it. it's so good and, and here's the other thing so a lot of people are like oh my god diablo's dying blah 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 you know how they are and i'm like i don't Spare. care it not dying it's a it's a freaking like 100 plus hour game that's getting monthly events and all this crap right there we go I mean, you could play it there so many go. times you could play whatever how does it die Okay. How's it and, die? Oh my You know word. what I mean? And and but people are so revolved around this meta we got to stay on the thingy and if they don't yeah. if, you know if they buff this or nerf this blah 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 it, it hurt. Who cares, man? Just play the game as a game. Like Just if you want to follow the meta and you want to do the best builds, best this, best that. Guess what? You're going to get burnt out when you're following that because all you're doing is There you go. You're just running on a train that's a, like you're on a train that's going to eventually run out of tracks because you're running out of content to do because you're Dude. trying to follow the best thing that is in the game. Like just play it as a game, do what you want to so do. So much, even if you got the most underpowered build possible, who cares? Not the point. It's doable. Who cares? Okay? You know it doesn't what? matter. I'm going to sound old. I'm going to sound old for a second, right? Yeah. Okay. Back in my day, you mm. used to just be able to buy yeah, a do game. Deckard Cain voice. It was a physical. Back in <laughs> my oh, day. <laughs> Back... I wish I could do that voice. Um, I used to, we used to go, you go guy, buy a physical game, okay? A physical copy of a game, mm -hmm. all right? You go home, you sit on your console, your PC. You just hope it kind of works, okay? Uh, especially when it comes to PC and you're working on your home PC, right? Um, you hope it kind of works. You put it in. If it doesn't work, oh, well, you cry and then you move on with the life. If it works, you that's it that's it okay in my household we didn't have the internet until i was like 18 or something like that okay so there was no such thing as updates post launch or any of this crap okay the, a dead game you only yeah. knew it when the pc gamer the local magazine came out and said it's rated two out of ten and no one's right, playing right, it. Right, 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 then right. you can say back in that day these days yeah. i mean so what like you say dude if you're just having fun then that's my thing i'm just sitting there i'm just having fun with my necromancer or whatever game i'm playing just enjoy it it's all good man no one cares yeah i mean <laughs> no i cares. so i i mean i've i've always had the the good opportunity and you know, I was, I guess, lucky enough to play so many different games and like generations of consoles and so on yeah. from way before me and after and so on. But we didn't. I mean, we had probably internets before I was born, like my grandparents, which is who I grew up with, um, who raised me. Amazing. But I never had access to the internet really, or especially not playing <laughs> feel games that. online until probably about 2012, I think. Um, and then it was very, I mean. It wasn't a lot, and then it just sort of progressed more and more. Very but it's basic. like prior to that, I mean, I grew up playing a PlayStation One and Nintendo sixty four, dabbled in PC, but not a go. ton. I mean, I played mm. original Xbox and PS two into the three sixty. But even when I was playing three sixty for many years, there were no updates because I didn't have internet access. Okay, I didn't have my Xbox connected to the internet, and so you know. People forget that they're video games. They're not. Yes. I mean, whatever you want to think they are, but they are video games. Yes, they can. You can learn things. You can grow. You can create. You can do all kinds of things, no matter what the game is. Multiplayer, online, creative, whatever. But they are video but. games. And so when you sit there and you be overly critical, which is obviously a critic's job, but even players mm. in this day and age will be like, mm. oh my god goodness like i was walking around in this giant open world sandbox game that gives you freedom to do whatever you want and it's an rpg with choices and consequence and so on but the npc fell through the floor it didn't even affect my <laughs> game but they fell through the floor so it's just the game's ruined my immersion's you know what, gone I, you know my That's immersion is ruined i just throw it in the trash now but this i don't this even thing, like this games kind of anymore. attitude is you say, yeah, that's the whole thing. I'm done. I'm done. This industry is like, broken. But this whole thing comes also mindset. down to... 
I agree. It comes down to his immersion and graphics. I think a lot of guys these days are so stressed about the level of graphical fidelity that they're getting in a game. They forget that, you know, back in the day, we had games that were running on 8-bit and it was the most immersive stuff we've ever seen I mean, in our life. Even you know before I mean? that, it was it was less than 8-bit. It was just like... It was less than 8-bit. Like, you had two pixels and you're like... You know what I mean? Exactly. Pong what, what back was in it? the day. I mean, come Pong. on, man. Yeah, exactly. Pong, man. But, I mean, but this is the thing. I played on my grandpa's Atari. All right. Yeah. My grandpa had an Atari, and yeah. he used to tell me we used to have to put a screen on the TV mm. so that you could play it. And I was like, wow, that's hectic. Yeah. But that I was mean, immersive. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. And But here's the thing. It's like I love personally to go back and play old games, and then very old games. I like, man, there's like an arcade near me, and I like to go there and just play old crap. I like to just go there and play games. I'm personally yeah. a, a huge physical game collector. Huge oh, physical man, I game envy collector. You. I have a huge collection. I still add to it all the time. There's a local uh, game slash movie store um, actually very mm -hmm. close to that arcade. And like they have a lot of stuff, so I've been adding stuff to my collection recently. Like I bought the Punisher game that came out on original Xbox, played through it, and actually wow. beat it for the first time in my life. Um, I had no way to record stuff, and I want to make a video for it. So I got our pal Hey Blondie. He went and recorded some uh, video for me. Oh, fantastic! He's such a oh, great nice. guy, <laughs> and so now yeah. I can go make a video sometime. And recently I got a capture card, so I, I was can just gonna do say, a lot a more cool card? stuff. That's pretty sick. Yeah, it's a it's yeah. it's a very simple cheap capture card though. It's this it's this little thingy here. Oh, yeah, it works. Go. You know, I mean that's okay. Yeah, yeah. so I mean it just goes it into works, my works. computer and then hooks into the TV and then you record it through OBS. But I'm gonna use nice. that for game preservation. So anything that exists as far as dev diaries and so on that exists exclusively on a disc mm. is gonna be on YouTube soon. That I you know can find, what? that I can that think is of. That's so cool. And I'm starting with Ghost so Rider cool. PS2, a game that is kind of underrated, not very well that. known. I didn't even know it existed till about a year ago. Yeah. And then I found yeah. it on eBay. I bought it. I binged it for several days. Super short game. Fantastic. It yep. has its issues. It's a God of War clone, sure. Oh. But it's so much better than you would expect. It's like a semi remake <laughs> slash sequel to the movie. It's got these yeah. cool comic book cut scenes. It's so good. It's just yeah. so good. Okay. Yeah. And it has like five dev diary or four or five dev diaries in it. I didn't actually know that. That's quite yeah, from the cool. art director, game director, and a few other people. And none of them exist online. On, not on a website, wow. not on YouTube, nothing. They don't exist online. They're only on that disc, which actually you know no what? clip, you know, no clip, right? Mm. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yes. They started doing a thing recently where they opened up a separate channel that is exclusively for forgotten media. They found they were they got oh, uh, a bunch of stuff in boxes that were being thrown away. It's old interviews, mm -hmm. old uh, press conferences and E3 events and gameplay and trailers that do not exist online. So they are now putting them on there. And I think Noclip That's is beautiful. one of the number one best places for game preservation <laughs> on the Internet. Hands There's down. another one too. I've recently uh, been introduced to We Love. So, do you know the channel We Love Indie Games by any chance? Yes, yes, I do. Oh, well, they've, they've just started a new one called We Love Retro Games. Okay. And at first, I was just like, all right, so what are we going to do? Because I didn't know anything. Like, they just started right. the channel. So, I was, I was, I was speculating of what they were going to do. And then, but then, like No Clip, it turns out they're just they're going over ancient games that I didn't even, like, I wouldn't have even ever thought they existed. Oh, yeah. And they're just basically retro gaming and they're showing these old games that i've never known but then presenting in a way that preserves it in its own way not yeah. like reviewing it just literally essaying Gameplay it and, and talking stuff, about yeah. it and i'm like exactly and i'm just like damn man this is some awesome stuff and really when it comes to hearing uh guys like you that are, are starting your physical collection and uh preserving games i'm so envious because i can't really do that where i am for now because you know Got to live a nomadic lifestyle, but one day, one day, I will have my little underground one bunker day, refrigeration. One day, the show <laughs> will journey into the depths of game preservation. <laughs> In the future, it will be amazing, and we'll do a, a whole tour. But no, yeah, I think it's amazing. Whenever I hear something like that, I'm so envious because it's such a. For me, it's both cool but also noble in its own way. Can you imagine yeah, having yeah. stuff like that to look back to a real archive? What? Things that actually, yeah. Yeah, well, man. and that's a cool thing Very about cool it, stuff. but also like, like I was saying on your your stream yesterday. So, I mean, mm. my mission, like, the whole point 
like I mean I started this channel like 13 years ago or something. All I did was like ra ra random really? gameplay Damn. videos and things within my means, right? I mean I was yeah. like recording stuff with my phone on my TV and sneaking into my grandparents' computer room and uploading them because they didn't want me to have a YouTube and then deleting all yeah, proof of anything happening. Right, so and I did that for years. Um, and then I eventually hit to the point where, okay, what can I do that I can make that's a lot higher quality than random videos recorded on my TV? I said, okay, I can do unboxings. Fair enough. I can, I can find some. I mean, I used to take controllers and remote controls and just prop up my phones of varying degrees of quality, zoom in, get the perfect angles. I'd have friends and siblings help me. And I would just record unboxing games. And I did that for more than five years, probably. I was doing that up, up until a little bit before last or like a little bit before last year. I've still done a couple here and there. I've just done it a lot less. And now I do the occasional haul video, which is the only thing that kind of goes back to my roots. Um, That's crazy, and dude. So my, my channel's changed a lot. Uh, it's insane. I respect but, that. I mean, I started out doing freaking tech no, even before then, I did. I was doing fuck. There's so many because I did a vlogging channel once upon a time, and I did a tech review channel. That was the most marginally successful, and I enjoyed that. And then I used to get like tech from uh, PR agencies, review them, mostly cell phones, that kind of thing, all consumer tech, and that was a lot of fun. And I tried to be the MKBHD of South Africa for a little while, and I really would have carried on with that if I didn't leave. But, you know, it was a whole thing. And to hear where you started and then where I started it, I, didn't, you think I was scared like of this. doing gaming. Yeah. What do you mean scared of doing gaming? Like YouTube videos and stuff? Is that what you're doing right now? Streaming and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. You know why? Because, like, where I'm from, the gaming community tends to be very... Uh, rough. Um, you know, they, they... Yeah, rough. They're, they're not maybe... A lot of them are beautiful human beings, but there's this whole click of uh individuals which just make it really rough to be a creator in the gaming space you have to be and behave a certain way and when i when i decided to do my tech channel there are a lot of people pushing against that kind of attitude uh there's very um but bro culture kind of vibe but very toxic um coming from csgo days they were the original creators of content back in those days and then we right. had a bunch of new people come in which are a little bit uh, a little bit more open-minded and more modern uh, way of thinking and um they clashed a lot right so i sat yeah. there and i was like look i don't want any part of that like i i just i just want to talk about games and then i was like cool i'm not going to do games i'll do tech um but i regret that actually because i would have hey because that should have you know you gotta look was, at it like this you gotta look at it like all of that brought you here right yeah, everything see, you've ever exactly. done in your life has brought you here okay so it's brought me to this moment and on you this podcast that you, you gotta remember that you have to fail to succeed right you have to fall down to get do back that. up and you have to do right. these things and take these risks to get to the point to make the things you want to do like or make the things you want to make exactly. do the things you want to do right and i'm telling you i've been on a journey <laughs> yeah but it's what, what else know, did i you mean do? i think that's that's something cool that you you definitely I, I think you're doing great with your gaming stuff right i think that i think that's awesome uh, i mean you know what the thing <laughs> hey, is listen it, don't it's... talk crap about yourself listen i said you're doing great okay <laughs> uh i just thank you very much and you know but what I'm, I'm gonna put that I'm in my the, credits i'm the positive spirit in the youtube space apparently so um, I, I've been told this too many times and I, I, I'm starting to believe it. <laughs> yeah, man. You, you, it's I not a bad thing. Stuff. I mean, obviously, I but no, I, I don't get a chance to catch all your stuff so often, but it's like, there's so many creators that I've met over the last year or so that I'm just like, Whoa, this is some good yeah. shit. And then I don't ever get Hello. to everybody, but it, it's, oh, so I, it's hard for me to keep up, up as well. I mean, a lot of times, especially <laughs> when you're watching multiple people, a lot of stuff flying yeah. under the radar. Like the guy I did a podcast with, Frankly Gaming, which he has skyrocketed very quickly. He's up to like 60K yeah. now, which is crazy. What? But he's he's but up you know to 60K. Don't you love that though? But do you know what's cool about that? Don't you love that, that when you see like a guy and they, they just go, Phew. Yes, yeah, tell me. But he still responds to like every single comment that he gets. All of love them. that. Which is something so you need to keep, you know what I mean? Especially when you got that many. Like, it's just cool. It I obviously agree. takes time, and that's a lot of, you know, that's that's something you really it could be. Do you know who does that stressful, as well? But it's 
Who's that? Do you know who does that as well? So when I started my channel, whenever I freaking started it, um, I, I just emailed, just randomly emailed like a few years ago. I emailed a bunch of yeah. creators, um, just all of them, just, you know, whoever I could find email addresses of. It was a cringy email. I was just like, hey, I'm Hyak Show and uh, this is what I do. Just this is not an ask or anything. Just saying hi, introducing myself. Please take care and, you know, whatever. <laughs> I got a few uh, emails back. One of the best ones and the most consistent that I've had was Kirk Collects. No, Kirk Collects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, it's the and Discord. He, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, same. And he got back to me. He's like, hey, you know, don't worry. Uh, good luck on your things. Um, and don't be disheartened if you don't get anywhere soon. You know, this is a long. And then one day you'll just wake up and there'll be that one video that will just pop off and everything will be, you know. And that was yeah. that was about two years ago now. And you know what's nice? He's, he's not changed. He's still got that attitude. He's still got that energy. He responds to people even to this day. Um, all this thing. It's nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? When yeah, creators cool. go I mean, from... That's that's Some, carry sometimes on. what's crazy is that you look at these create you know to a degree you look at some of these creators um especially if you're not one um and sometimes even if you're a small one like us it's yeah you look at them almost sometimes in that sense of like a celebrity in a way like you feel like they're too far out of your reach they're not going to take time out of their day to talk to you even though some of them are like even someone like like frankly or like you know uh kirk which compared to some are really not even that big right compared to some people out there mm. and mm. but they're still way bigger than us so it's like a it's a weird yeah. disparity there but some of those people are still genuine human beings and then some of those people genuinely just don't care about anybody else but just, yeah, there's you know. that there's that too i mean we, we have yeah. a few of those in the community and i like to think that in real life they're different you know, I, I know, uh, like, online, it's a bit, people are different, you know, they put on a mask, yeah, they put but, on a persona. Uh, you a... know, I but I also think that, you know, any persona that you put on is still, it's a string attached you? to your actual character. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, if, I feel if you. you are okay with going online, making YouTube videos, and only caring about monetary gain, that's probably how you are in real life. If you are yeah, only going to follow right. what's popular to succeed, it's probably how you are in real life. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I mean, I think. I mean, between the fact that my channel has been around a long time and uh, I've always done so many different things, combined with the fact that I don't really filter myself, I don't follow what's popular. I cover whatever I want. I think that's why yeah. I've had a slow kind of grind to growing, even though it's still been pretty yeah, consistent. Maybe. Um. Because that one, it tricks the algorithm. I don't care to say fuck. I don't care to say shit. I don't care to say, you know, this is a pain in my ass. I don't. I don't care to say that stuff. Yeah. But that stuff they do not like at all. YouTube doesn't it like does. that. Um, even if you go through all the right channels of yeah, this is a, an adult video. I don't. Don't. Uh, that irritates. It's me. not for children. That me but off. then you say, it's oh, it's not well, for don't. children. Yeah. <laughs> but that you know that does because if you're rating it, yeah. for adults and then they're like oh but you still can't i was like yeah you still can't say fuck christ like can you relax like this is meant for older people don't it's not my responsibility yeah. i'm not a parent okay you i'm not there and youtube parent, is really right? bad at just pushing what like pushing stuff to the right people anyway like the algorithm will just i mean the algorithm is i don't know it just doesn't make sense half the time i'm, I'm convinced the algorithm is like a is like a sleeping ai like it's, it's i mean probably yeah it's self-aware it, it, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's like everything else nowadays, where it's it's marketing to what you're interested in, but also trying yeah. to push you things that you're not interested in, so that way someone's making money, which is how everything is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's useful when you know the AIs and stuff are listening to me. That way, I can you know find the stuff I'm searching for on Google faster. But you know, other than that, yeah. I well, mean, I, I stumbled across though. a I stumbled across a really cool uh, video the other day. And in fact, he even says in his the introduction of his video, he's like, if you're finding this video, it means that you were fed this video and you weren't subscribed to me and you weren't whatever, whatever. And he's going on because lately the algorithm has changed and this is how it's changed and this is why it's weird. And he talks a lot about um, the competition with YouTube now going up against TikTok and other channels like that. I don't really consider Meta a competitor to Google right now, if ever it was, because... No. You know, well, actually, the meta, the whole insane. metaverse thing is um, bullshit. Pretty much done. Actually, it's it's already kind of. You, did you notice? Already, it already did you notice? Hit, it just went quiet. It already <laughs> hit this, and it's already went like this. 
uh, oh, yeah. because it oh, was yeah. just a stupid thing. And, you know, Facebook, I mean, the metaverse, I mean, you need video game developers to make that to begin with, because uh, to be fair, it, yeah, it's exactly. a video game. OK, it's a virtual reality. It is a video game. Exactly. It's a video um, game. But as far as like the meta uh, headset, I have one of those. It's pretty cool. I like that. But oh, this is the thing. It's so strange sucks. because in one hand, exactly, the device itself is actually pretty cool. I, yeah. I think the I mean the the device was originally. I mean, we had freaking John Carmack of all people work on that thing, and I know he left, but I mean that has to there has to be some little bit of Carmack magic in there somewhere. Oh, the device sure. itself, I'm fine with. That's consumer yeah. level. That's okay. But the metaverse as a concept, well, as their concept, I think is bullshit. I, I don't oh, know who it was. Yeah. Uh, something we saw online one day. They're like. Guys, listen, um, virtual reality is cool and shit, but are we really okay with letting Zuckerberg run this stuff? Like, surely there has to be yeah, somebody I mean, else. <laughs> of course nobody's okay with that. You know, I mean, I have my my my, my Facebook or whatever's connected to mine. You can disconnect it now. They added an update. Yeah. But I'm like, I, I don't really care. I mean, yeah, I barely exactly. use Facebook. And, like, why would I care if it was connected to my uh, virtual reality headset anyway? Because, like, if, if it's not like I'm – if I'm worried about the – safety of my information i mean i should have been worried about that yeah. like when i was like five or something because i mean exactly i'm sorry but just so, so anybody now. who doesn't know <laughs> i mean it's probably been more than 30 plus years that you haven't had any privacy or security even if you believe well, that yeah. you do because i uh, said that to i said that to an older I mean, friend computers of mine. have been around yeah. a long time Ca cameras on computers have been around a long time uh software within computers that have access to a lot of things are around for a long time we've been carrying cell phones exactly. in our pockets for more than 20 years um i mean come on like you don't have there any privacy go. and as long as you're not doing anything illegal they really don't care about you so i would i would be exactly. if you're not doing anything illegal don't worry about it because I My mean, biggest thing all is of like your information is being sold to someone to some degree, and it's really just being sold 100%. for money. It's not like they're stealing your identity necessarily unless your card gets hacked. But the information being sold is just like data being sold. It's not like specifically, hey, they're stealing your specific data to do this, blah, blah, blah. No. When your data is sold, it's sold because when you say, okay, I'm downloading this game on my phone or I'm downloading this app on here, I'm downloading Steam, yeah. and you agree to the services – Part of those services, yeah. nine times out of ten, is an unoptional data collection, including video games. Like, there are games on your Xbox, your PlayStation, that ask you if you want to send them data to help with fixing bugs, doing this, doing that, doing that. Yeah. And that does it help those things? Yes. But also, your data is being sent and sold. But why is data sold? Well, data is sold for marketing, for ad yeah. revenue, for ads to go towards what you want – and so those things are sold so that way they can market to you easier and make your life easier in that sense, right? That's the the whatever. Well, one hopes. not that it does, <laughs> but that's what it's not that it technically does. for in a in a in a sense, I guess, right? I mean, dude, that's why I've considered uh, very seriously uh, leaving my career entirely. Here, give me just one. Uh, second. Leaving my no worries, no worries, pal, no worries. I was saying, um, I was actually considering leaving my entire career at a stage about uh, two years ago. Purely because of shit like that, where you you know you're selling data for advertising, but the problem is the ethics and the morals of the kinds of ads that you run and how you're basically manipulating people. Like ethically, you wanna you wanna make sure you're giving people what they need and what they want to help them in life, right? And that's beautiful. And I try and do that. However, because it's business and people pay money and things like that, ninety nine percent of the time we get crap, you know, and we have to push whatever, you know, and, and a lot of the time you might not believe in it, right? So you kind of, my brother and I, we were in the same industry and I was saying to him that one day, it's like, I feel like we're part of the problem. <laughs> you know, um, there's this whole thing of just the way, it's why marketers, depending on their level, especially their generation, um, older marketers tend to be quite arrogant. You know, they have this quite, this, this God complex of power because, and I get it completely. If you can sit back and say, I was responsible for an entire country calling toothpaste Colgate instead of toothpaste. Um, yeah. There's a story of that in uh, one of the African countries. I don't know if it's Uganda. I can't remember now, but basically they don't call it toothpaste. They call it Colgate. Even if it's a different brand, it's called Colgate. Huh. And um, it, yeah, it's insane. And uh, it's one of those things. Should be a step. Okay. You can step. What? If you need to uh, speak to your son, it's all, it's all good. Oh, you're good. Keep, you're good. Okay. Oh, no, I was just saying. So, like, um, it's, it's when you sit back and you look at marketers like that and you're like, huh, well, this is really fucked up. Um, and, and, you know, I'm using that as an old example. But obviously there are more 
screwed up marketing um, campaigns and things that go out throughout the world. Oh. A friend of mine and I were actually thinking about trying to do a um, sort of like a um, like an ethics board kind of vibe to try and get people to try and join up and basically say, hey, we're good marketers. We're not the bad guys. Right. Um, but I really consider just leaving the industry entirely because it's all so completely fucked at the end of the day and starting yeah. maybe a bookshop somewhere or a Magic the Gathering shop or go. a gaming shop. In fact, actually, more realistically though, we were talking about starting a games publisher or a games uh yeah games publisher game studio kind of up you see i'm not 100 percent sure what it should be um but that would like just coming forth from like a, a lifetime of gameplay lifetime of media and marketing what and then a friend of mine's like okay what would you actually do though as a publisher and i'm like honestly i'm not 110 percent sure but we would publish games in inverted commas yeah. and help with the marketing and help with getting it out there and the sales and blah 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 so he's like oh so basically what you do now just with games and i'm like yeah, I'm okay with that somehow compared to, you know, trying to sell, what what did they say in the movie? Sugar water or, or whatever it might be. Um, right. So, yeah, that, that's that's kind of like my redemption arc in a few years. Maybe I'll do something like that. But no, ma dude, marketing and the data that marketers get and ad agencies get is just, it, it becomes appalling after a while. It has improved over the last three years, seriously. And Facebook screwing up was part of that, um, which is good. But I mean... Ugh, it's still it just made the data more expensive honestly that you can still get that data in some form or fashion and you can still be extremely manipulative to a market but um if you have enough money but uh oh you know i i'd I prefer not doing it at the end of the day I, I prefer to be more creative like you can that's why we have the youtube channels and everything oh, yeah. like that rather no, than uh, rather, <laughs> rather than this other stuff yeah bro so anyway like i say i mean starting out a games publisher or whatever like that might be like another um chapter in my life and whatever but right now i'm kind of just right now I'm, I'm fine being what i'm doing it's just morally and ethically uh my brother and i are like we can see that we're not we're not super happy with our craft and our yeah, industry I mean, it's, you know it's, it's very it's, it's definitely would be an interesting like a, a weird situation to be in and it's definitely something from the moral and ethical standpoint hard to really figure out where you fall in that right and how you feel about that and your effect on it but yeah, it would be pretty cool if you did like a publisher <laughs> type of thing. That would be interesting. I've been thinking about learning be. learning more about Unity. I've dabbled in it a couple of times and try to develop nice. a game myself <clears throat> of some some kind. But we'll see. Um, but that's the thing, right? A friend of mine recommended Unreal Five because of how many tools and support yeah, they yeah, have. Apparently, has apparently a, a that's amazing. Right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's interesting, like it, as a publisher. Versions. Right, eh? And you see a lot of cool uh, Unreal 5 games. I mm -hmm. thought Unreal was, like, when they announced Unreal 5, I thought that was going to be, I mean, it is, to be fair, quite immense. But it was so amazing to see how quickly the industry just clicked over to Unreal Engine 5 compared to 4. Normally, they'll dwell a little bit in older engines and whatever, take about two years or whatever. But Unreal Engine 5 isn't fully yeah. released yet, has it? Uh, so, I mean... Yeah, no, it's... Well, I don't know as far as, like, for the public to use, but... There's not that many True games that, eh? on Unreal 5 yet. Uh, there's, as far as big games, there's only, like, the first one was for Spoken. True that, yeah. And that was... Uh, yeah. And then now the Immortals of Avium that just came out is uh, part of that as well. But I think... I don't know uh, if it's a common knowledge. Else come out this year. Uh, forgive me father uh forgive me father 2 is going from unreal engine 4 on the original to unreal engine 5 on the re on the sequel which is pretty nice. cool i mean they're still keeping the same yeah it's, it's right. interesting it's if you look at the style. gameplay footage and things yeah same art style but the atmospherically i can you can kind of see oh there's a bit of extra polish here that's pretty yeah. cool to see uh yeah it's kind of like we'll see <clears throat> it uses that kind of similar cell shaded style that like borderlands really popularized yeah. And when yeah. Borderlands 3 came out, you know, they somehow made the cell shaded art style way, way more detailed than the prior game. And you're like, how is that even possible yeah. for this to look even better? They surprised everybody. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, it's definitely going to be cool to see Forgive Me Father on Unreal 5. I'm, I'm excited. I still need to finish the game. Um, but uh, did you, weren't you going to make a video on it as far as the art style goes? Oh, dude. Are you oh, my word. I. Man, I have made so many. I've 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 actually made so much content about and uh, forgive me, father. At this point, I think I'm totally done after this one. So, <laughs> like, I'm fully done. So, I made a few shorts. I made a first impressions video, which is this just start a video. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. while I am reviewing a video, I make a video about me and that. So, I made the first impressions while I was making the review 
All right, for the, like my final video for that, I was approached by Reload Magazine to write about Forgive Me Father. Or they, they kind of, they were lovely. They gave me an option to write whatever I wanted. Um, and I asked, asked for Forgive Me Father. And I really came up with a pretty good piece, but then I made that while in the midst of the review. So I'm like, oh, yeah. fuck. I kind of said everything now. So this review, I sat back, I finished it, and that's what I was editing before this. And okay. I sat back, I finished it, and I'm like, you know what? That's I that was it. Coming soon. I can literally say nothing more about this game. I mean, it's a great game. I fully, I highly recommend you finish it because there's a great twist uh, at the end. I'm definitely, but definitely it's going like, to. Um, Did, uh, didn't Reload oh, Magazine yeah, launch yesterday or something? They launched their Kickstarter, their second Kickstarter oh, okay, okay, yesterday. Okay, okay. And uh, actually, I think they, this afternoon when I checked, they were halfway there. As a matter of fact, it's not, a, you know, compared to. So as far as has, has go, the magazine released yet? Uh, the first edition was okay. released uh, late last year, and this is going to be their second edition. There, there's been a lot of shame. I can't, I, I struggle to speak for them. I'm not I, like I think they look, you know, I mean, but from what cool I know, they have. Uh, isn't yeah. um, one of the guys involved with uh, Hundred Acre Wood is involved with Reload, right? Oh, Jared. Yeah, yeah. So who does Jared, the streams um, for Jared 3D Bed. Realms? Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Jared's been geez, Jared's just been killing it lately. But oh, yeah, yeah cool, so no Reload Magazine as as everything they've been doing amazing. This last yeah. year though they've been, from what I understand from Melancholy Geek and a few other guys that I've just been watching their content, they've been doing a lot of the work in the background. You know, so yeah, yeah. registering their company, sorting out their processes, their editing suites, all that jazz. So they've come a long way in the last year and a half or so. But from what I hear from Jared, they're they're now ready, if that makes sense. So their second That's edition awesome. is now being backed. I think that'll be released later this year. But then after that, they're going to kind of repetition so, is going to be quite high. So it's like every other so do month you have, or so. So, okay. So do you buy the magazine or do you get it for free? I think it's, no, I think it's free. Okay. I think it's free. Yeah. The, well, they, they're backing the process to create it. And then what everybody who backs gets it for free. Everyone else also gets it for free. I think something like that. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I would be intrigued to uh, hear more about that process, but Either way, the Reload magazine really intrigued me because it, it seems like it's going back to those like old Game Informer roots that were there when I was younger. Yeah. Or, you know, in Nintendo Power or like stuff like that. Actually, funny enough, uh, you know what Walmart is? Yes, of course. Okay. I mean, I don't, I don't know if they got a Walmart over you there or not. Know. Walmart's everywhere. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So Walmart actually has their own gaming magazine. I don't know if you know that or not. No, I don't I know if know it's that. online anywhere, but they have their own exclusive gaming magazine that is free. That's it's actually so weird. kind of better than Game Informer most of the time. What? Can they you have imagine that? They have dedicated writers and everything that are in like every issue that do reviews and full blown like Damn. things in this magazine, and they give them away for free in usually in the gaming section. There's like a little rack that they give them away in, and they also impressed. always they nine times out of ten they come with a poster. Like a that free poster. The last one that I picked up for free came with a Tears of the Kingdom poster. Damn, man. That is quite excellent. I mean, if you think of it from a marketing point of view, you're trying to sell more games, make people hype about weird, games, right? a weird thing to go for with uh, Walmart, actually, but it's actually kind of funny. Mm. The local Walmart is remodeling, and they're selling like a bunch of games for nothing. Like, oh, I'd, I'd be in there. Brand new games, like $5, $10. Which I don't know what that is that's pretty for you, reasonable. but it's pretty cheap. Oh, that's, re that's fair. No, it's fair. No, that's fair. No, um, I think the thing with Reload is that they've they've really come a long way. They are gonna they're gonna do some amazing stuff. And I'm sure. um, in terms of free, I think I think there's majority is it for free, but I'm not not 100 percent sure. There, I'm not a proper rep from Reload, so I don't want to speak out of turn. I'm just a I'm just a friend of theirs. I'll a look, very passionate I'll more, hype hype machine yeah, of theirs. <laughs> I'll look more into it later. But uh, I guess let's talk a little bit about um, Realms Deep uh, coming soon. Hell yeah. Uh, you know, I know you got a video that you're going to be working on for Realms Deep, uh, so if you don't want to say too much, that's fine. But, yeah, I mean, oh, I um, I'd like to talk about it a little bit. I'm going to be entirely honest with you. I I usually watch Realms Deep, but I rarely follow it. Um, okay. So I don't really know what's well, going to be there or what's, like, teased to be there. I know the most I know is that 100 Acre Wood is definitely going to have a new gameplay trailer there. I know really? that I think I think Forgive Me Father Two is gonna have something there. Um, Ooh. Well, allow me, my I'm friend. I'm not sure what else, Deadpool. but I know there's cool things that are probably gonna be there. Allow me to regale you with my thoughts and opinions okay, and, and such things. 
So now realms deep. I same like you, right? Got in when they first had their first event, <laughs> and it's so cool. Like that was that was when, like we had Dusk and Medieval Iron Fury that were just coming out at that stage. It was pretty epic, and Boomer Shooter was like the hype word and everything like that. And I've been watching it ever since. Um, yeah, I tried yeah. to back in the day, like it's same like you, right? You get busy, life happens, everything like that. So I made a few videos around around Realms Deep, but I always watched it and always loved it. Especially last year, we had a few Boomer Shooters, and that was pretty sick. But we also had a lot of indie games, like just indie yeah. titles in general. And I thought that was so refreshing. You know what? Because you're trying to sit there and you think. Okay, look, boomer shoot is a thing, but also it's kind of it's so blurry as a concept in general, right? So it's just this, this fun term that we use now. But um, it was nice to see that they're bringing some indie games in, like oh, there was this flying game, and Bio to Swarm was this weird little indie single screen. Ah, it doesn't matter. But you know, so so crazy cool games coming through, right? This year, like I went through a list. So back in the day, it turns out past past Hiak show was a bit pedantic, and I took a bunch of content and a bunch of information. I made a whole list of the 2022 um, mentions of games throughout, and I went back to have a look at what's actually happened to most of these games. A lot of these games have gone from, like, just demo to early access, which is really cool to see. Like, things like Coven, uh, Relentless Frontier, uh, Hellslinger, things like that. They they've all come to early access, which is really great to see. However, there's been very few that have actually come to full live status. It's a full game, it's live. Um, right. And funny enough, when I was writing the script for the video that I was editing, um, I realized that two things called out to me. One, uh, we had... Incision, which I think is out now. I think that's fully yeah, out now. Was I, think, it Incision? I think it is. Yeah, I think it's out. It was one of those. And then we had, um, Qua I mentioned in my video, which I now completely cut out because obviously uh, Quake 2 Remaster, which uh, I speculated in my video, but now it's fully out. So hell yeah, that, yeah. that is pretty sick. Um, so a it lot of these studios... It a moment like that where I was working on a, <laughs> a, the Viewfinder game. I did the a review of the yeah. demo and then I had some trouble editing and then the game released out of nowhere before i got the video out and i was like crap so yeah. it's so heartbreaking i had the same yeah. i was gonna make a short there's so many of those demos that came out that i was gonna make shorts and that is valid now but on realms deeps front um this that's gonna be dude it's gonna be a weird one because we're gonna have new games like hundred acre wood which i'm really excited to see um Jar jared's game and uh what's the studio called oh i forget the studio's name shame i, I forget the name bad. Of the but hundred acre wood they won't mind um, hundred acre wood is gonna be pretty Throw cool it. And and uh, other than that, oh. you're gonna get um, oh, holding thumbs, getting catch it, getting catch it. <laughs> so close. <laughs> oh, thanks, bud. Thing. Um, so we're gonna get hundred acre wood. <laughs> Definitely gonna be cool to watch. But more than that, though, dude, when last have we had an? Okay, I'm gonna be very sad if we do not get a demo for Iron Fury or Iron Fury, uh, Iron Fury Aftershock and Iron Fury, um, not Iron Fury, Phantom Fury. Uh, those two games, because that's been a long time coming. Not so much Phantom Fury, but Iron Fury Aftershock, the expansion to the original Iron Fury game, yeah. that's been a hell of a long time coming. Yeah, it's been a while. And I think it was Dave O'Shea that was, yeah, I think Dave O'Shea was saying uh, somewhere on Twitter, on the Twitter, uh, when they were at Gamescom, that they did actually have a booth of the demo. So I'm hoping, and again, I can't find that fucking tweet. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so sure I saw it, and uh, I'm hoping that they'll have a demo now at Realms Deep because, my damn, they've been leaving us blue balls for all of the 3D Realm Slipgate Ironworks for such a long time. Now we're going on oh, yeah. three years with some of these games. Some of these games, four years. So, like, I don't mind waiting. I'm the kind of guy that doesn't mind waiting. Look, if you're gonna if you're gonna make a game, cool. Like, go ahead, make it. When it arrives, it'll be sick. But yeah. they've been hyping out some of their games for the last three years, and it's getting a little shitty at this point. It's just like, guys, look. It's fine if it's not coming for a while, but stop teasing. Yeah. Like, it's just getting yeah, a little shitty at this point. I don't want to go crazy into it, but that is kind of like a, oh, sure. a thing that I think in the industry is bad um, in general. I think mm. it's fine when, especially a lot of these indie games and stuff, are doing a lot more demos, which I think are something that games in general That's need fair. to do way, way, yeah. way, way more. Especially AAA games really need demos because... Oh, especially then AAA. Then you wouldn't have people buying the game and it being like a mess, right? Even if you mm. polish the demo down to like a T, it still would give a better yeah. impression, right, than just your trailers. And, of course, people 100%. don't want that because it could hurt sales, whatever. But it still needs to be a standard, and I think indie games are pushing it that way because, I, I mean, like, recent Resident Evil games have had demos, so... 
Um, but this but is the thing, right, dude? The, like, the if issue we got I demos, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, no, I was just going to say, I think with a lot of the games coming from uh, indie publishers like like New Blood, like 3D Realms, things like that, I, no hates on the guys. Like, these are some of the hardest workers in the room, okay? And oh, they're no. so passionate that to see them share their, their, their creations, it's so groovy. And I'm a fan, right? So I, I love yeah. this stuff. But it does get a little frustrating from as a fan when they every year it's the same story where it's like, oh, it's coming. And I'm like, guys, look, it's okay. Just just stop it, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stop so that's, that's what I was trying to get to is that I I think it's a very yeah. bad standard that we've set where nowadays and it's even worse for it's it's really bad for early access games and most triple a games um where they're like okay the game's coming out this time and then it's like oh no sorry it got delayed it's coming out this time oh sorry it got delayed oh wait it's coming out this time yeah. it's been delayed again oh, oh one more delay okay no stop just stop doing that um stop. okay stop. cyberpunk was delayed like <laughs> four times in less than yeah. six months okay um yeah. you know dead island 2 decided to do one delay for like three months which is fine but still odd but fine um you know and indie games it's a little bit more okay because like it's not as all right well what i was saying before we were interrupted was that <clears throat> i think it's just a bad standard for things to constantly get delayed over and over and over and over and just like like i was gonna say it's 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 okay it's more okay with indie games that they're yeah like that just because they're smaller teams smaller budget whatever but they shouldn't be promising things that they can't uphold but that also Absolutely. comes down to the reason i think that not only they do but um like other triple a studios it's also like you know um investors want times yeah. and so on so there's like different elements to it but that didn't ever seem to be like an issue in the past so i mean i don't know why it's one now right you know what there's this click of um this group this click whatever you want this cult of uh, executives that are currently in not just the gaming industry but now are sitting in this c-suite level that literally should all be on freaking Ritalin, like ADHD drugs, because, or, or they are on some kind of crack or mm -hmm. something like that, because I feel they all run into boardrooms, over-promise, completely, and, and the thing is, they wouldn't care, right? Because yeah. in about 12 months, they've made their mark, they've gotten their salary, gotten their bonus, they can fuck off to some other company uh, in 12 months, leave the investors and new people hanging, and then you can always blame each other once they've left, right? So it doesn't matter. But they've set these lofty, ridiculous expectations. And I do... I, I've, I get frustrated when I see that, oh, no, you know, it's about the investors. So it's like, I've been in companies that they're like, oh, we need to check with our investors. I'm like, you listen, your investors are very important and they believe in the dream. But also at the same time, fuck your investors, all right? They've invested in you, they trust mm -hmm. you, or they should. If they don't, you've got a big fucking problem, okay? Mm -hmm. But you need to be like, listen, investor, thank you very much. Uh, now we need to go off and do this dream, okay? Yeah. And go off and make this shit work. You can't be sitting there like, oh, the investor wants, wants I don't know, fucking hell, these kinds of transactions actions or whatever fuck that okay you do need to monetize you do need to sell your game you do need to make money yeah. but we've seen it time and time again where double a AA or triple a games that have just re just released no dlc no microtransactions none of the other other crap okay uh no de no real delays they i think Oh, God, I can't believe I'm going to make this reference. But Baldur's Gate 3, <laughs> all right, they had an early access uh, for like, what, two years, three years or something like yeah. that before they released the full game. And even before then, they were working on it for another five years before that early access release. You know what? Apparently, I haven't played it myself, but apparently a good damn game. I don't know if I will. Yeah, we'll I mean, see. apparently but... it's, I mean, it's just like top of the line. So. <laughs> but, but the point is, right, exactly to your point, listen, stop edging people on okay if you're gonna say hey guys here's a great game here's the demo hope you enjoy it well it'll be released when it's ready fine cool but don't come out every single year and be like here's a little bit more here's a little bit more like just it's yeah. okay it's fine go, go and do your thing we're okay we're fine and i know that there's been a little bit of talk around aeon of ruin that game now aeon of ruin they announced it a few years ago demo but then they also yeah. keep every year on and on and on and on and i'm like listen maybe just stop it stop about that and i know there's been a big issue with the slipgate ironwork games that apparently that there's still a lot 
apparently, I don't know how true this is. I just it's hearsay at this point. Yeah. Um, but there was a lot to be done on a lot of the games, more so than they thought originally when um, a lot of the developers came over and things like that. I don't know how true that is. Um, it may be true, but the thing right. is, it's fine to wait until a proper release. No one's gonna mind. But just stop edging people on. That's the, that's the rough part is that they do, and I think that's where people get a little frustrated, which is unfortunate. Right. Which is, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I don't know <clears throat> why it's become such a standard to just constantly promise this, promise that, whatever. But mm. it's it's not been yeah. <clears throat> as bad this year. You know what I mean? Um, with all the True that, yeah. over-promising I think back a bit. just giving a little, a little bit of information here, a little bit of information there. The game's not coming out for the next eight years, but, you know, just going to keep telling you more. <laughs> Whatever, you know, know what? And the thing is, overall, Realms Deep as an event, I love it. I freaking love yeah. it. I think it's a great concept. It's a great idea. More needs to be done around it. Like, you know, not more needs to be done around it. Like, I wish, I so wish that I had the ability and the money to go to um, the 3D, 3D Realm Studio and just hang out while the event is happening. Just oh, yeah. be like, hey guys, I can I can cover it for Twitter or something. Like, I don't know. Just use me. Goddamn. Yeah. Um, I think. But, I, I think but I'm that, a, a real uh, hype beast around it. Yeah, I mean, I think I think 3D Realms doing Realms Deep is super cool, and them just kind of coming Agreed. back into the spotlight and helping indie games get out there, or even making their own games, right? And I think, yeah. um, uh, crap, what are they called? Uh, New Blood, New Blood. I think New Blood's like New pretty Blood. awesome mm-hmm. in the indie space, right? I think, and with all the games Ooh, they've made yeah. and all the things, that, I mean, they've helped kind of like further um, boomer shooters and like other games quite a bit. It's pretty cool. I I have a lot of time for New Blood. Like out of all the indie publishers in the in the space right now, New Blood have really kind of just they I don't know, they just they're cool that way. They're just like head off to head off to head off to head, but they're not not asking for attention in the same way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're just letting the work speak for them. And that's what I like. I think another new up and comer in the last year or so that has really made a good mark has been Hyper Strange. Um yeah. and they've like they've kind of cut they, at first they were when they first came out uh, of when they first came out when they first started coming onto the scene um they were fine nothing 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 too crazy but lately in the last year or so damn they've been making a go at it um especially with uh postal brain damaged i think that was theirs and um it's just they've really been making good waves and there's one more who i always forget it's not new blood it's not hyper strange there's one more i always forget it but there's another studio as well i referenced yeah, smaller in, um, publisher oh very small. Oh, wait. No, it is. Um, so, Hellforge Studios as well. Um, so, I, I've been a fan of their three of their games that have recently released. I've always been a fan of um, Bridge Burner's Doom Maps and Major Lane's Doom Maps, and that's fine. But um, uh, Relentless Frontier, uh, Extrinium, which I reviewed, and uh, Hellslinger, which is really, really cool for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. But um, Relentless Frontier, for one, is a good example of a developer who's done really fine on their own. But as soon as they went over to Hellforge Studios, uh, I think Bridge was actually saying that they're definitely a micro-publisher. It kind of gives little guys like me hope that, oh, I could be a micro-publisher too, maybe one day. Oh, Mr. Yeah, Bridge, please teach me. More of those. Um, <laughs> but it's... Yeah, it's going to be so cool. But their games are really groovy. Like, I know they're built in the GZ Doom engine for the most part, right. but damn, they're good. Like, they're they're really good. Relentless Frontier, from where it started, and I know a friend of mine or a mutual friend of ours, um, uh, J-Rod Gaming, legend, uh, he played Relentless Frontier back in the day, and apparently it was trash. I don't know, because I didn't play it until very recently, or very recently, about a year ago, and it was excellent, you know? So, J-Rod was like, geez, did they really improve that much that quickly? I'm like, apparently. So, Relentless Frontier, Extrinium, which had a great early access uh, release, that was a fun game, and then Hellslinger as well. You could see the Doom, GZ Doom inspiration in there. These are really awesome indie boomer shooter games, and damn, they didn't overpromise. They actually didn't do as much marketing as I expected, as a matter of fact. But they let their work speak for them. And I think New Blood do a lot of that as well. Hyper Strange is coming around to that as well. It's just good to see in the industry. Let's do that. Let's let the work speak for itself. And oh, yeah, let's have sure. demos. I that's fine. But let's, much not, prefer but let's not overhype this stuff. No, no exactly. they, they, they don't not overhype, overhype stuff. because, we don't need I mean, to that's, do that's a, like, what, along with the other stuff, that's a big problem in the industry is just <laughs> overhyping <laughs> everything. Like, everything gets mm-hmm. overhyped. And then you complain about everything. Yep. I mean, it's, I love it, but it's 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 like I mean, over hyping up stuff is bad right now. It, it's been bad for the last few years, more so than ever, just because people get their expectations so high that it messes everything up. Yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Over hyping. Hyping. Over hyping. Yeah. Yeah, I just think over hyping is bad. I mean, I think people do it with everything, and I just I don't like it. 
I mean, nah, nah, if you want to be excited for something, be excited for something, but don't sit and like push your ideals onto something or your ideas onto something and say that the developers claimed that was going to be in there when it was never ever said. That's the thing. Like, I mean, there's so many, especially in the AAA space. Look, right now on my shit list, there are four um, big AAA publishers where I'm just like, guys, listen, you got you got to get on the same page with your developers and your creative staff. Like, you're you're putting stuff out there that just makes no sense anymore. You're promising things that just make no sense, or you're you're saying things that obviously the public is gonna hate. Do you know what I mean? When it comes to like microtransactions and oh, yeah. predatory um, things like that, it's just like, guys, obviously this is not popular. Surely someone in your innovation team can see, hey, maybe there is a better way to make money from yeah, games I mean, that isn't toxic microtransactions, you know? In free-to-play games or mobile games, especially free-to-play mobile games, I get it, right? Um, maybe yeah. even in like an MMO or something. But the one mm. place that I don't understand it is when it's used for single-player games. And so, I think this is mostly from... I think it's mostly been bad from the perspective of Ubisoft... And ever since Assassin's Creed Origins, they've had like XP mm. packs and things like that in a game that is 100% single player that that serves no purpose. Serves I mean, no purpose. Uh, you're just wasting money what, to just level so up silly. faster for what reason? You know what I mean? Like, who for cares? What reason? Just play the game. You know what I mean? Like, you're not competing against anybody. No, it's <laughs> just, just, just it's, go. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> You see, this is the thing, right? I, I like to use uh, Doom Eternal as a pretty cool example in this, right? They came out with a really epic game. I mean, you know, we can always speculate about what they may have released if we didn't have the lockdowns and everything like that. But I don't know if it would be much different. However, I think Doom Eternal is a really excellent game. When they started doing skins and things, I'm just like, okay, cool, for battle, their, their battle uh, multiplayer uh, yeah, PV, yeah, yeah. PvP. That was okay. I mean, I don't know... Again, the argument can be made where the deathmatch or arena battle or something like that could have still worked in Doom Eternal in some form. I don't know. But um, having skins and stuff, when they gave you the chance to just basically grind to get the skins, it was just this fun addition. Eventually, yeah. they came out on Steam. Hey, if you want these old skins from a year ago, you can buy them for like five bucks or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Oh, and people lost their fucking mind. And I was just like, whoa. Kids, shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, I mean, they're giving you the <laughs> that, that, opportunity to buy these skins for pretty cheap compared to their competitors, but you can't get exactly. them anymore because they were limited time, like challenges or whatever. Exactly. And, and I'm just like, that's totally fun. And I bought some because I thought, hey, I really like that skin. It was the unicorn skin. And I was just like, that's funny as fuck. I want well, that. I mean, I'd pay a little bit of cash for that. <laughs> there's a difference in paying like a few dollars for like a skin or even a few skins and paying $20 for a skin on like Fortnite or something. You know what I mean? There's a big go. difference It's a there. big difference. It's a big it's difference. It's actually like out of all the things that I love about Diablo 4, the worst thing is that they have a shop, right? I didn't yeah. use it. I don't care about it, but it's there. And the funny yeah. part is that they don't even update it's that there. shop. It's been the same skin since the game launched. So it doesn't even update it. It's just really? there. Yeah, there's nothing in it. Well... But to get one so see, skin, I even to get there. one... Now, these are all transmog. Like, they don't... You know what I mean? Like, you can transmog anything in that entire game um, yeah. to make it look however you want. But the skins and stuff, that's just transmog. It's not armor. It doesn't have any stats. It's just transmog yeah. skins. Um, but yeah. they... No shit, okay? Cost, like, $30 for one. Oh, yeah. Like, that's not oh, a yeah. joke. Like, the, um, like, to get the very weird specific number of in-game... Or, like, their stupid, stupid-ass currency... You have to buy like thirty dollar thing, and then it's basically twenty five or something. Yeah, dude, it's, it's just, actually that's like it's one so funny skin because that has no benefit at all in the game. It's, I mean, look, really if you're if you're the kind of guy, if you're like my brother, okay, my brother plays Dota, okay, Dota mm -hmm. two, and he loves that freaking game. Somehow, I don't like it at all, but he'll buy skins and shits because. And I was like, Warren, why are you buying this shit? And he's just like, oh, because I like the way it looks, and that's fine. Hey, listen, hey, it's the same with me and the unicorn skin in Doom Eternal. If you're gonna just buy it because you think it'll improve your experience. Okay, because that's what it comes down to, and you're bragging rights if you if you're that kind of person. But with Warren and myself, it came down to being like, right, I just like the way it looks, and I think I'm going to do it. So for him and I, that's fine. But there are other people that, for multiplayer games, this is life. The way that they look virtually in front of people that have never met, or maybe that means a lot. Met, yeah, that is everything. It means a lot, and I feel sad, feel sorry for those kinds of people. Hey, look. 
That means a judge. But if that's the way you want to do things, fine. If that gets, the, I gets think your when rise, it comes to like cool. multiplayer games, if you're actively playing yeah. it all the time and you're putting hundreds of hours in this game and you want to spend like yeah. five, ten, twenty yeah. dollars okay, and buy skins enough. and stuff, go for it, right? Yeah. But I mean, yeah. if you shouldn't feel forced to do that, you shouldn't. You shouldn't feel forced. Feel like you need to. That's right? the difference, right? Yeah, you shouldn't feel like you need to to change the way. You, it should not affect gameplay. All right, it should not be this thing that you like. This is why I got frustrated with Destiny Two, for example, because it starts to become this thing where the you got to pay and it affects your game, and that sucks. Okay, yeah. I just want to play in an awesome game. If I choose to go and buy a skin for a gun, a gun because I'm putting two thousand hours into this game. Cool, then that's all right. Let right, me go yeah. and do that. But to say, all right, if, in order for you to get the best stuff, you have to pay or you have to grind yeah. an unnes- unreasonable amount well, of hours, like in Diablo yeah. Immortal, then it becomes ridiculous. A lot of free-to-play games have that issue where you're kind of barred out to a certain degree where you, until you pay money. So like you can only make it so far and get so far until you pay money. Now... I'm going to yeah. tell you right now, I don't think a lot of people pointed out, but like World of Warcraft is one of the first games to do this. Um, yes, it is. They, they, they allowed you to level up to like level 15 or 20 for free, but to go any higher than that level or progress any further in the story or do any other content, you had to pay a monthly fee of their membership. Yeah. Right? I yeah. think people like put these nostalgia goggles on and think that microtransactions haven't been an issue for a very long time. Now they're just more prevalent in mobile games and especially free to play games, which I mean, fair because they they're free. How else are they going to make money, right? Um, and make back what they you don't want ads in games. It. No, God, I don't no. want ads let's, in games. Can you imagine that? Everyone would fucking. Keep, <laughs> if that's the two options I have, is microtransactions or ads? Let's go with microtransactions. There we um, go. Okay, because someone out there is always going to use their mom's card to go buy a bunch of crap. Okay, that'll keep the lights yeah. on for that company. But the thing is that you should be forced to do that. You know, it shouldn't be like World of Warcraft where you can only level up to level 20 and make it like halfway through the story. And then to make it the rest of the way, you have to buy a membership. Hey, at least it's microtransactions that are optional versus them making you buy a membership to get through the game. Okay. Um, Exactly. You know, I mean, all the way around, it kind of sucks, which is why I don't really play a lot of those games. But yeah, it's just an issue we have right now. You know what, dude? But it's like. But you know what? It's like Apex Legends, right? I loved Titanfall 2. That, that, was, that game was so fucking intense. It was beautiful. The story, the gameplay, everything. It was amazing. And then they obviously stopped making it. We know how the story goes. And then yeah. they came out with Apex Legends. And honestly, it's at its core, Apex is a pretty good game, great. actually. All right? I actually think that it's really at a its great core, game. it's probably one of the best Battle Royales. Because I will say this, that Apex has been pretty good at not being as predatory as its competitors. Um, in its microtransactions, it doesn't push it as much. They don't have all this like uh, cross marketing with other stuff. They don't um, do a lot of that. It, it's a little bit better, yeah. and it's everything is extremely yeah. optional, and they make sure that it you know that it's extremely optional. Um, yeah. you know their their battle passes and stuff are not nearly as egregious as like Fortnite and mm. Call of Duty and so on. Mm. Um, I also feel like the skill ceiling is higher in that game and like it's you know it's easy to pick up but hard to master kind of thing and it, it's kind of got that perfect I agree with that you know you know gameplay progression no, I'm but, a fan of Apex I'm, I'm a fan of Apex but I think that Apex was a good thing in one degree so I think that with uh, Respawn you know they made Titanfall which was a huge game super successful um it was a game changer for the industry. It was the first game with advanced movement, you know, um, running on walls and doing all this crazy stuff. And it was crazy, right? And then yeah, that that allowed them to make Titanfall 2, which was a game that was extremely ambitious. Um, EA screwed them uh, by releasing them directly yeah. between Call of Duty and Battlefield. And it didn't do as great, even though it had a better multiplayer than the previous game. It had one of the best stories in any FPS ever made. And that so sucked. Good. And that was kind of a flop. So I think Apex was like, hey, guys, look, if you want to continue being a studio, this is kind of the only option we have right now because this is popular. And this is kind of the only way you're going to make money back for what we lost and which we lost a lot on Titanfall 2. So they did this, right? Well, the coolest part about yeah. it is I don't think with, with, without them doing Apex, I don't think that there would have been a studio. 
Without yeah, them doing yeah. Apex, I don't think that they would be able to make the cool shit that they're making right now with the two recent Star Wars games. You know, Fallen Order True. and Jedi Survivors True, are also respawn. Apex Legends is funding them to, is it? to branch out and allow them to, I mean, fundamentally you, stretch you know their muscles and Jedi. be more creative. Okay, I mean... The, that's insane. That's news to me. I didn't know that was respawn. I have Jedi. Yeah. And I wanted yeah. to get um, Fallen Order as well. Uh, you know, it's one of these games I'll buy and I'll keep it on my shelf, my shelf, until I have that weekend uh, off to, Fallen Order, to just enjoy, right? Yeah, Fallen Order is the first one, by the way. <clears throat> Fallen Order, the first one. And what's the Survivor, Survivor is, is the, the second one. Oh, okay. You see what I mean? All right. So I bought Fallen Order. I need a bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's one of those games I'm waiting on. I had no idea that was respawned. Oh, this boat's yeah, very well. Yeah, this man. boat's very well. Okay. Yeah, Jeez, I mean, Fallen Order. So, well. so, like, my favorite Star Wars games prior were the Force Unleashed games. Oh, and same, then same. When Fallen Order came out, dude, that became my favorite Star Wars game to this day. <clears throat> but now dude. I started. Okay, look, I started up. My dad gave me money to buy Survivors as uh, he was struggling there for a bit. And then <clears throat> I, uh, I kind of started my own little mission when, uh, you know, what, you know what Redbox is, right? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Well, around the time that like movie uh, rental places and stuff kind of shut down here, they started a company called Redbox, which uh, set up kiosks in stores and different locations where you rent movies and they used to rent games as well. Back in 2019, oh, cool. they stopped renting games because they were moving into the on-demand rental and on-demand streaming service, which they are now, um, as well as still renting movies out of kiosks. They're actually still a pretty cool company, but they don't do movie, they don't do games anymore, which is kind of dumb because I know they made a lot of money off that. Um, <laughs> and so my dad used to only um, rent games. He didn't really buy them. He didn't really, you know, it was cheaper to rent a game for a weekend, pay like three to six yep. bucks for a couple days versus 60, right? Yep. Um, so then, he would do that a lot to play every new game coming out. But when that happened, he, he didn't do it anymore, right? And he still, you know, wasn't, couldn't really justify paying that much, whatever. So I stepped in and decided I would buy him games from time to time for his birthday, Christmas, just a handful of games. So I'd buy him some stuff that he, that's new, he didn't get to play, whatever. And so he kind of just, he, you know, he bought me Survivor to, you know, <laughs> kind of give back or whatever since he'd been, you know. But awesome. now that he's got, you know, he's kind of doing better with his little business that he has. So anyway, that That's brings funny. me to I, huh? I just said outstanding. <laughs> oh, yeah. But that, that brings me to Survivor, right? So I started up this morning, played about, I don't know, close to two hours probably. And um, just so you know, it's phenomenal. It's amazing. That's outstanding, dude. I'm not very That's far so in cool it at all, hear. but it's awesome. It's, it's, it's such That's an improvement brilliant. over Fallen Order, and I love Fallen Order. And it's... It's already better in two hours. That's so amazing, it. man. You know yeah. what you see, but you see, all right, there we go. That, that That's a stellar game right there. That's put some good minds there at Respawn actually going out there and making some good shit. You know, that's all you want at the end of the day. I mean, dude, this is why I would, straight up, that, that like, this whole conversation for me is, like, why I would do my own publisher, just to, like, make a better difference in the gaming space to actually help create games that are good games first and yeah. money makers second if that makes sense right. i mean you got to make money you're a business but like yeah. gee come on man i mean devolver does this really well <clears throat> yeah devolver does yeah you know i think um oh, man they do very very well you know if you've ever paid attention to any of the studios that um got shut down right the thing mm -hmm. that they all have in common is they a lot of times they were making the same game over and over right true that yeah okay Lack of so, innovation. And it's not, I don't think it's the lack of innovation, it's the lack of their publisher allowing them to innovate, allowing them to make something outside okay. of their comfort zone. Okay, True let's that, just yeah. say uh, Lionhead what Studios, well known from Fable, right? Yeah. Lionhead Studios of Fable fame. That studio got shut down by Xbox because, I mean, and I'm sure there's a lot of factors, but all they made was Fable. Okay, they made Fable, yeah. they made Fable 2, they made Fable 3, they made some spin-off games for the Kinect or whatever. It just wasn't making the money, right? So that's why they don't exist anymore. I'm sure there's other factors to that, could be greed and mm -hmm. the current management at Xbox at the time doesn't but it doesn't really matter now, right? So the the whole thing is that they were making the same game. Okay, now let's move on to like Capcom Vancouver, 
who worked on who used to be um crap what was their old name uh i can't remember but capcom vancouver who like they made dead rising 2 dead rising 3 dead rising 4 okay yeah and the spinoffs so that's all they made though yeah that's all they made and every single time that they pitched a game that was not dead rising capcom shut them down every single time they had like three games in development at the same time as a dead rising game trying to get other things made but capcom said no 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 no. we're just going to keep capitalizing on the popularity of dead rising but they capitalized on it so much that they dried it out they destroyed it you know what i mean so dead rising after dead rising 3 90 percent of the people that were even working for that studio left and then when dead rising 4 happened they just hired a bunch of people in who made connect games and sports games say hey make a game and then ended up being a dumpster fire so that's the thing is like when you have a studio just constantly make the same thing over and over they're inevitably going to fail they're going to lose their creativity the amount of people there are going to leave and change because they don't want to be there anymore because they're not allowed to branch out and when you're allowed to branch yeah. out, you're allowed to make better things. So it's like dis okay, not dishonored, but uh it's like Arcane Studios. Oh no, I was gonna say Arcane Studios, yeah. exactly. But it's like Arcane exactly Studios. Like okay. That. I personally think that Red Fall is a dumpster fire, right? And I don't think that's their fault. Yeah. And I also don't think Deathloop's that great of a game. I think it's a cool game, but it's not like it's not arcane. Thank you. At least I'm not the only one that thinks yeah. that. <laughs> it, um, it's not arcane, right? So, but there's a reason why both those games exist, and there's a reason why both those games aren't arcane. I mean, there's two reasons yeah. to it. So, they made what they made all the way up to Prey, and mm. that you know, Prey was peak arcane. That was their magnum opus. That would probably be the best thing that they the ever make for the rest of their career. And I know that sounds bad. It does sound bad. Oh. And they might be able to <laughs> surpass it. But the reason being is that it is a good thing that they had the opportunity mm-hmm. to make Death Loop and stretch their muscles and change a little bit, even though they were forced to make that game cater to a larger audience due to the failure of Prey and Dishonored 2, both games which did not make a lot of money and did not actually make back any profit, and neither of which could find the market that it needed until <sighs> ha- like you know half a decade later. So so frustrating, eh? Yeah, and so it is good that they're branching out now and making these things, so that way, hopefully, those can fund... Like, Deathloop was insanely successful. It's honestly... The failure of Redfall probably hasn't even hurt them because of how successful Deathloop was. Um, it was insanely you successful. See, so it was a Game of the Year runner-up. It had so many awards. Yeah. And no matter how I feel about it, to the masses, that was perfect. That was like a Bioshock. You know, it's like System Shock was yes, struggling, exactly. but Bioshock happened, and it just like... That game isn't even Immersive Sim, but it made Immersive Sims go into the mainstream. It made Immersive exactly. Sims go into the mouth of your average person in an average household, even though it wasn't even really an Immersive Sim. It was more like an Immersive Sim light. This is the thing, and at the end of the day, is it's it sucks. It sucks that at the end of the day, these are business decisions rather than yeah. creative decisions. And I know we got to run companies, even the bigger guys, like with Arcane Studios, not really being the old Arcane anymore. But I mean, most of the people that were at old Arcane don't work for Arcane anymore. So I'll tell you but uh, at the same time, a, an opinion real yeah. quick that uh, I think Raph took the magic with him. Oh yeah, I think Raphael took the magic with him. Most of the so. magic of that entire <laughs> studio came with, I left with him. It went to Wolf Eye Games oh, and Weird West and so on. Oh, but dude, this is he the was thing, the right? creative so, I mean, director. He, kind of, he he founded the studio. You know what I mean? But if you follow these guys, right? Exactly that, oh, yeah. right? So if you, but I mean, Harvey brain, Smith is there, you, and he's great. Um, so is Dinga, but but I don't know. Mm, There's something missing. See, this is the thing, right? You got to follow. You got to follow these brains around and see where they end up and see what they make next. Then, then they can. Then you get surprised. Then you see this amazing oh, stuff sure. that comes out. But like, but, if we say prey and then we look at um, Dishonored, but then we now look at Redfall, you can see. Okay, fine. So those games financially weren't great. And then you look. Okay, then the executive is sitting there. If they're financially not great, though, that's not a success. So do what we say, and then it'll be better. And then we get. Yeah. Um, Redfall. The one that I haven't played, and then and then Redfall. <laughs> well, so just, I oh, think, no, but, you know, here's the thing: is I don't think I think Redfall sold great. I'd say it probably sold great. Eh. 
Because eh, I mean, such... pe- <laughs> it, it probably sold great though. It's it's received terribly because it's terrible, but it sold great because it's arcane. So I mean, that name, especially after Death Loop, you yeah. know that there was pre-orders. You know that people had that downloaded day one. You know that they were not able to get refunds. Never okay, pre-order. so it it, it they. It, it sold well. It probably did well. It probably didn't do Deathloop well because it's not as good as Deathloop. I think Deathloop as a game is solid. It's a good game, but it's not a good arcane yeah, it's game. A solid game. It's not a good immersive sim. You know, it's it's as right. it's as bare bones and as basic as you can make a game to be to the mainstream audience with a little bit of that mm. flair, but that was the point. Yeah. But the thing is that Deathloop might open doors for them to allow for them to do more things like Prey. Redfall hurt the credit too much. So it's good that they're allowed to make something like Deathloop and Redfall. The bad part is when the uh, publisher side is and the marketing side are pushing certain agendas to make money, which has then caused them to yeah. not make money by forcing in things that don't need to be there. But the good thing is that they're getting to make things that are different. And, that's and that's true. good for a studio because then they get to stretch their legs. I had a more positive twist on this that I my next Prey video comes out um, because I think Dinga and I think Harvey are both really, 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 really creative and great people who are doing great things with both their respective versions of Arcane. But I think the people who are above them are not allowing them the freedom that they need. And But that's why something like Respawn being allowed to make Fallen Order, which was an insane success, and probably one of the... It literally came out in a time where everybody's like, nobody wants single-player games, okay? Nobody wants to play single-player games. Oh, I remember that conversation. Nobody wants single-player games. You're an idiot if you think nobody wants single-player games. Everybody wants wants every kind of game, okay? Why do you think there's so many genres and stuff out there? Everybody wants everything. You can't sit here and tell me that... And and especially saying nobody wants single-player games, that's literally what everyone plays. You, you actually That's think that more wants. people play multiplayer wants. than single player? There's been single player games around longer than multiplayer existed. Okay, so exactly. you can't it's tell me that why I look this nobody way. plays single player. <laughs> like, it just doesn't make any sense. No, that's but yeah, I mean, it came out at a time where, like, single player games were supposedly being villainized and not wanted or whatever. Yeah. So it, that game was good on two fronts. The front of being a success for respawn and ea after such a flop of titanfall 2 even though that game is insanely good and has garnered even more love since it released than it did when it when it launched which between that and the success of something like fallen order a titanfall 3 could be in the works right now we just don't know it and the the amount of extra revenue made from apex legends helps them do these other things that are stretching their muscles while still being in that Titanfall world, expanding that lore, and getting people interested in Titanfall. Because Apex Legends is a also, not only is it, oh, hey, we had to do this to make money, but it's also, hey, we're doing this secretly, EA doesn't even notice, but we're actually getting people to become Titanfall fans, and then there's no way they can say no. Because you know how many people it's have played, that, a- whole, you know how many people have played yeah. Apex Legends and now went back to Titanfall yeah. Two, a lot. Yeah, so many, a lot. Um, so see, you're actually, gaining, you're gaining fans, there, and now you're making Titanfall mm. Two a. I mean, that game it's actually has like a, uh, yeah. like actually has a lot of people playing it on Steam right now, like online multiplayer. It's like Arcane has to pay its penance uh for a financially bad game you know to, uh, and then like be pulled in a little bit take less of a risk but then when they've made the executives and the shareholders happy then they're like oh actually you know what we're making so much money now you yeah. actually you know what what is that idea you had titan full three all right we can take a risk on that now you know so yeah. you know what i think you may have a very valid point there my friend you know, i also would like to say that like not only was Fallen Order like, hey, you guys can do more and be really good with it. Um, and, you know, Titanfall, t- you know, it wasn't like, oh, hey, you know, Titanfall 1 was just a, you guys were just lucky that that was successful. You know, Titanfall 2 didn't do great. I swear it was a good game, but it just didn't do great. And they probably yeah. were like, oh, well, you guys are just kind of a flop of a company. Then they go and they make Apex and it's doing great. And they're like, okay, here's Fallen Order. Let's, let's see what you do with a Star Wars game. And they make one of the best Star Wars games ever Rocky. made. And not only You've got me did hyped that, on this game now, yeah, hey? <laughs> but not only did like Fallen Order, the first game, not only did they do great with that, came out during a time where single player games were less common or whatever. 
without Fallen Order's success and without Fallen Order being so great, it wouldn't have made a lot of yeah. AAA studios go back to the drawing board and make more single player games. True. That True. was like the, I mean, the pivotal so game. Goes into those that was like the pivotal game in 2019, I think, that really got people to go back to the drawing board and make more single player games in the in or in the triple A space because they were all starting to go towards exclusively multiplayer stuff. Yes, yeah, so um, everyone wanted this battle royale. Yeah. Everyone wanted the or then suddenly they pivoted to so everything had to be an extraction game. Yeah. One Tuesday, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember eventually. I, I there was this game. It's an awesome game called uh, The Last Outpost, I think. Um, yeah, and it I've, didn't I've start of off one. as an extraction game. Yeah, yeah, and pretty cool, pretty cool. It didn't start off with extraction, and then one afternoon I looked at the update and like suddenly it's extraction. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, well, it's just yeah, cool, it's kind of like how everything now is is it has at least has a battle royale mode. Um, and no? it's almost like you need <laughs> one to keep traction in your online game. So. I don't mind it in some areas, right? But it's like yeah. uh, the AEW game. I actually just released a video on it. Um, yeah. The AEW wrestling okay. game. Um, I'm not I like... Don't want, I, don't, I, don't I used to be a huge wrestling fan when I was younger. I kind of fell out of it. For first wrestling game yeah. I played since like 2011, and I love it, right? They just released a Battle Royale mode for it. Now, does it look Come insane? On. Yes. I think just because... Fuck it, why not, right? But... It, does it look insane and actually quite entertaining? <laughs> yes, it actually does. If you look at the premise for it, like sometime look up AEW uh, Stadium Stampede mode. <laughs> it's it's uh, interesting, yeah. But then also <laughs> the evil fun. the Evil Dead game, which is already a asymmetric mm. horror game, which is really good, mm. fantastic. It did well. Yes. It did it did well, right? They released a battle royale mode, which was odd. I could see that. Um, yeah, it's odd, it, was, but... it was odd, right? And I haven't played it yet, but I mean, I'm not against that. But I can that. see that. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I'm not against that. that I would actually see Evil weird. Dead be more extraction than Battle Royale. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, It works I mean, well Ash as an is, asymmetric kinda... horror game, though. It works well in that sense, like True. Friday the 13th or New Texas Chance of Massacre, that, those kind of games, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, and, and so to get back to like Star Wars Jedi Survivor, that game is extremely successful. It's... Um, extremely loved by many. The biggest criticism it got was that it launched unplayable on PC. I remember that, yeah. Which I yeah, think so is I don't know if it's even fixed because I mean it only released like a handful of months ago. That's why but, I didn't get it. Yes, I remember yeah. there was a whole thing. Yeah, and a friend of mine got it on release, and then she was complaining. And I was just like, oh, I'm sure they'll just patch it out. Give it a. Give yeah. it a I don't know. I don't know how it is on fine. PC right now because you don't really ever get updates on Thanks. these things. Um, people just yeah, shit on it, shit on it when it happens, and they never mm. update anything. That's actually something that I have that's funny about reviews is when when people release reviews of the... Because you have to release... When you get an early access of a game, right? You have to release the review day of, or whatever. Or, like, whenever they allow you to yeah. release after the embargo, right? After the embargo, yeah. But you are playing a pre-release, pre-day one patch version. Now, day one patches didn't become yes. a thing until the Xbox One and PS4. That was never a thing prior. Yes. Um, it might have happened here and there, but it was never a requirement. Now games are like kind of forced out, and then they get a, a patch. So mm -hmm. I'll tell you a funny thing about Jedi Survivor is that base game on like Xbox is 50 gigs, right? Which is pretty small for your average AAA game. But it has an update yeah, that's days. 105. Why? Then why yeah. release the game? Holy listen, shit. Listen, <laughs> it's listen. basically all two games. On PC, the entire download of that game is 180 gigs. See, games like this. So it, it, it's this game, it's Elden Ring, and it's uh, Cyberpunk 2077. I have all three. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. But I only play them one at a time, and then I uninstall them when I have a, yes. a long drought because they're so, too big. They're too the big. thing is that the PC download sizes are always higher because I think due to games being like having higher texture mods within the files or something for pc because yeah. that actually was a thing for prey that on pc it actually had higher res textures than console by default which is yeah. weird but i think that's what happens a lot with why the download size is higher on there than console but also it's like survivor was one of the like as far as a console game is probably the biggest download i've seen since red dead 2 which was red dead 2 was 110 on console right I get that because it's a freaking insanely big game. 
and Jedi That's Survivors is not like one giant open world or anything. It's like much bunch of medium sized areas. It's a lot bigger than Fallen Order, but uh, I can tell you why it's so damn big after playing just a little bit of it. I haven't even made it to the explorable areas yet. I'm in. I'm still in like a linear area of the game, like early on. The reason it's so damn big is because the f the freaking texture quality is really really high hot wow. like it's fucking awesome the render distance is mind-blowing the yeah. detail outside of your playable area is insane That's the particle weird. effects the everything going on like it's it's an intensive game you know what i mean and oh, yeah it should have been better optimized for pc but that's why it takes up so much damn space it's a big ass game unless you're call of duty in which case you have 50 gigs of alternative languages all saved on one freaking update yeah I'll so never forget that when we come to <laughs> when we come to because like your average game like big triple a open world whatever is like 80 gigs or something max typically mm. Mm. um sometimes higher especially on pc but that's okay right that's fine it makes sense with today's standards blah 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 but yeah. when it comes to call of duty when you're sitting there and one single game is like nearly two to three hundred gigs for a fucking multiplayer game that has maybe has a campaign and like a zombies mode or a multiplayer yeah. i'm like okay so what is the reason that this is 300 gigs there is no fucking reason it's called optimization no it's reason. called extremely poor optimization and a bunch of bullshit yeah. files that don't need to exist because you want to inflate someone's storage so they can't download anything else but your game that is what that exactly. is. I sat, I sat with Call of Duty. I think it was Warzone. A few of my friends were playing it. They were like, hey, Brett, you should come and play it. And I'm just like, ah, fine, fine, fine. So I went and I downloaded this shit. I was surprised by the file size and I couldn't actually get it to work. And I was just like, oh, fuck this shit. I don't care. Man, so I, I, I messaged I like my friend Call Obi Duty, and I'm like, listen, bro. Yeah, that's the thing. I like Call of Duty. I'm an original fan of the originals, you know, and it's, it's a, of, all the way up to the, the first Modern Warfare, right? And um, I, anyway, so I got this thing and I, and I started uninstalling it because I was like, look, Obi, I, cool game, but I think it's not for me. I'm going to uninstall. So I started uninstalling it. It gives me this pop up that says, are you uninstalling this game because it is too big or it has these options? And I'm like, well, yes, you fucking idiots. <laughs> like, so now I'm installing it on principle. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're, yeah, I'm so sorry. You're, just, you're poorly optimized. They're aware is, of it. Yeah. That's the thing. If they of are aware of, of course it, they're aware. Like, <laughs> and here's the thing is like, <laughs> and they're like okay, so oh, dude. <clears throat> here's the thing is that, uh, when they started Warzone with the first Modern Warfare remake, when Cold War came yeah. out, that game, Cold War yeah. itself only took up like 70 gigs. And then when they implemented yes. when they implemented Cold War Fuck. into Warzone, it went from 70 to nearly 200 just because of Warzone. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding oh, me? Oh, man. For what reason? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, so all you did was implement the capability of putting this game on Warzone, but it's like you have to download Warzone with the game as like to like a, more than one file but you can download warzone separately but every time you download a call of duty game you're also downloading another version of warzone as part of that file and it's just stupid it takes up too much space so i mean over, at least they allow you so now where you can just download the story or the campaign or whatever separately yeah you can't do I'm that. just so over Call of Duty right now as a concept these days. It used to be such a great game. It used to be a game my brother and I used to look forward yeah. to every single year. And All then the we same, started man. to realize that every year was the same game. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh, maybe we'll take a break for a while. You know, and that was, I think, 10 years ago we took a break from yeah. Call of Duty. <laughs> it, it's an unpopular opinion, but I think Cold War is a little underappreciated, a little underrated. I love the campaign. I enjoyed the zombies, yeah. at least the default map at, at the start. They kind of failed with the uh, DLC maps because I'm sure funding was pulled because wasn't a focus which is what happens a lot yeah. and you know multiplayer was good too but the game got a lot of shit for some reason even though you didn't go on to release vanguard like which Cold is War. just dog shit trash but you know whatever uh, yeah very sad very sad state of affairs that call of duty i mean look it'll have its die hard forever fans and i know they yeah. just announced uh call of duty 3 and i'm just like <sighs> looks like the same thing guys like this could have been a yeah. dlc i feel like um you know i don't know yeah for sure I, you know, so uh, I'll touch on a few more things. Probably gonna end up wrapping it up soon. What's cool. going on? I was gonna say I Join think I got it, about. Though, but it's going if on it's all right with you, I I know we talk a lot. I like it, but I got about fifteen minutes mo max left. Okay. If that's okay. Yeah. Uh, I just because I I wanted to just kind of discuss like uh, hundred acre wood real quick and uh, my friendly oh, neighborhood yeah. a little bit actually. Um, yes. What What are your opinions on like hundred acre wood? I think it's funny as someone like I grew up with watching winnie the pooh and stuff and i think it's kind of an yeah. interesting concept you know 
I'm I also kind of like, I think it's so I'm, great. I'm kind of confused on what it is though, because like, I know it's a horror game, but like, are you gonna build? Is it a survival horror game? Like, you gonna be shooting stuff, or is it like a hide and seek horror game, like Outlast or something? Or you know what I mean? Yeah, dude. So I mean, based on what I've seen, firstly, I love the idea of Hundred Acre Wood. When it first came out, and I did a little digging, I forgot that Winnie the Pooh has come into um, public domain. And yeah, I, yeah. there's so many strange people like, oh, how can you do this to this character? And I'm just like, because we're all adults now and we can do this. <laughs> I think it's a lovely little idea. Yeah. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think, though, I don't actually know what in terms of if it's a hide and seek game or I, at first when I looked at the way that the trailer, the original trailer was showing, yeah. I thought it was sort of like, I with mean, me really on this. Saw I guns. thought it was this. Yeah, we saw a gun. I feel that there's a bit of crafting or a bit of survival there, definitely. But to what end? I think it's kind of like we, we're um, we're um, uh, Christopher Robin, and we have to try and escape uh, the wrath of this crazy Winnie the Pooh character kind of thing like that. At least that's yeah. what I'm seeing. I have yeah, no idea like. if that's what it's going to be. Um, so like you said in the beginning, I'm hoping to see a bit more about that at Realms I'm Deep. I'm pretty sure I think it's exciting, that. though. Isn't it just the character of Pooh that is public domain? None of the other characters are? I'm not sure. Be I weird. mean, I would be fine to it see the other characters him. in there. Maybe Eeyore is like your... He's like your uh, uh, merchant from uh, Resident Evil 4 or something. Oh, I think Eeyore. Eeyore is our narrator. Dude, oh, I think, okay. cool, I cool, think cool, Eeyore cool. is the narrator. Yeah, I, nice. I really think it is. I, I think to some weird... Vibe. I think I think he's he was be, the narrator that we. He's hear. gonna be like the Duke from Resident Evil Eight. He's just gonna be like narrating everything and just kind of he's there, but he's not there. You just yeah, see exactly Eeyore that. peeking I, out of the bushes, being like, "And our hero goes through blah blah blah." <laughs> <laughs> it's just, funny, I really but... think Hundred Acre Wood has so much potential. I, I think uh, Jared and the guys behind it have some really cool ideas. Oh, yeah. But they so, like, mm, mm, they could go any which way what they wanted, oh, yeah. right? They, could they go can in play crazy it safe. With it. They could. Yeah, they, they could totally play it safe and then just do a survival horror uh, shooter game. And that's fine. I think everyone would play it and they'd be fine with it. Oh, yeah. Or they could be very creative and, and then come up with something completely different. You know, I, I don't know what, though. <laughs> but I, yeah, I'd love we'll to see. see what happens there. We'll see. I mean, oh, no, and, then, and then after seeing that and then boom, like My Friendly Neighborhood's announced, right? And then that game comes right? out and I'm like, okay, so we got Resident Evil meets the Muppets over here. Okay, okay. <laughs> Right, and, and this is what so everyone cool was saying looking. with my friendly neighborhood. So cool. Oh, I agree with you. I think so. I think Melancholy and a few other guys were playing My Friendly Neighborhood, and I, I get the vibe, right? Because I think it was you that was saying that it looks similar to the premise of uh, Hundred Acre Wood, just in like its energy, I guess. Is the best yeah, way I can yeah. Describe it. Um, but it's also uh, I thought it was a I, okay. Not the right way to say boomer shooter. I didn't know it was a survival horror that you had to uh, go and craft things and things yep. like that. It turns out it is. I haven't played it yet myself. Yeah, but it's I've like obviously a covered up, it a little like, bit and seen it. It's straight up Resident Evil style survival horror, survival horror with puzzles and all that. And like a little bit of Metroidvania really? backtracking and stuff. Yeah. Dude, full disclosure, I get so frustrated with Metroidvanias because of the backtracking. I haven't, I, I mean, I like the idea of what it is, but yeah. I get weirded out by I think it sometimes. The, I think the but, recent Resident Evil games do that Metroidvania, I like to say light at the end of everything, so Metroidvania light kind of vibe, where it's not like yeah. you have this massive, you know, just whatever world, but yeah, then you have to like, go, you yeah. have to go, you have to get a power at the very end of the game, then come all the way back to the beginning of the game so you can get a, a mm. chest that gives you the extra double jump bullshit. No. I don't, you know, it's not that bad. I think the more Resident Evil games, it's kind of like, hey, you know, you found a key here and you like go back and to your little main hub area and you can unlock a thing now or like, more. it's more simple fly, like a simplified version of it and I think that's fine. And I more think that's kind of what I think that's what My Friendly Neighborhood kind of does as well. It's not like you have to you know, unlock a thing at the end of the game and then you have to come all the way back to the way you started and do the... No, I don't think it's that bad. Well, that's good. I, I think if if uh, 100 Acre Wood just does a little bit better than My Friendly Neighborhood, I think it'll be fine. I think My Friendly Neighborhood, while it's a fun, engaging game, I don't know if the theme is is as as cool as maybe people might think it is at first. I don't know. Like, fine, Muppets, but it's, it kind of gets worn out very quickly these days. Everything seems... Similar. Sorry, I sound a bit more. No, weird. yeah, no. I mean, but it does I, seem it's, it just, it, it is just definitely an interesting <laughs> premise. Um, it's actually a, a uh, like a, another creator online who voices the main like antagonist of the game in my friendly oh, neighborhood. That must be why it was so popular. Uh, Arlo is his name. 
He Arlo. has a channel where he reviews stuff. He has like a little Muppet Cookie Monster looking guy as his avatar. Ah, yeah. interesting. Um, All right. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that had a little bit to do with it, but also it was made by uh, John Samansky and uh, David Samansky. It is by oh. some. Yeah. Oh, some, that's the that's the connection. Yeah. That's the connection. Yeah. Sorry, like because I've been sitting here trying to think why is this crossed my thing, and yeah. I had every intention of playing it because it's this guy. It's, it's, the, <laughs> it's the it's the Samansky brothers. Yeah, and they were made insane, it. dude. I, it's quick. What's tangent, funny though, though is I it's played, not a it's not a new blood game though. It's just their own what's thing. Interesting. They're doing yeah, their, own their own thing. Stuff. They're, yeah. they're doing a lot cool, of their own stuff. They're doing their own stuff as well as working on stuff with new blood, which is cool. Oh hell yeah! Did you play Chop Goblins? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. Dude, it love was that. definitely love a that. fun, a fun little like romp shootery <laughs> thing. Yeah, I mean it was. I, th I think there's, you know, I'm not like it's fun. I'm not a mega fan of it, right? I don't think it's like. I mean, whatever. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's also just like a it's like a five dollar game, right? You know, so it is, yeah. it is really cool though. Like it's a you know you you kind of beat the whole thing in one run kind of thing. I mean, you can go back mm. to the beginning of a chapter when you first get somewhere, but yeah, yeah I mean, it I was personally cool, for me, cool idea for I, sure. I had, I was just going to say, I admire the Szymanskis for that kind of approach to gaming where they're just like, lol, here's an idea, and then they just go ahead and do it. More like an artistic it's, it's, approach yeah, to gaming. It's, it's rather kind of than funny. Just... I think it's, I think they're, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I think they, they are kind of like me when it comes to my YouTube videos where they just kind of make the first yeah. thing that pops in their head. So one day they're just <laughs> driving down the road and they're like, oh, idea. Okay, let's go make this game real quick. It's only going to be like a 30 minute it. game, but hey, it's a game. Let's go do it. Okay. And, and it's kind of exactly. like me. I, I like just, that I, energy. I get an idea in my head. I jot it down. Then I'm like, all right, I'm going to make this video. Might not even Hell be a yeah. good video, and but I'm making it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, here's an <laughs> but idea. But it's nice. Okay, you know, that it. creative, throw the paints at the canvas and see how it comes out at the end of the day. Yeah, I yeah. love that energy, you know? I, I mean, I think that's, I think you need a little bit of that, right? Like, I think that's why I do, I think that's why I just, I make, I make a lot of videos. And to me, it doesn't feel like I get videos out that often, but it's actually probably too often no, you do. <laughs> it's no no it's, i think you've got I mean, a good face uh so i mean i am gonna pretty soon probably have a big space in between releases because i have like i have a few things that i'm gonna try to get out slowly like uh i got like a haul video those ghost rider mm. dev diary things my prey video but the prey video will be the last like main like video video though for a little bit yeah. while i work on the darkness 2 project that's very exciting Oh yes, that game is that 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 series of games is very exciting. If only you I could know see the it. script for my video. <laughs> Are you gonna pull a Ruby Ranger and have like a sixteen-page script? I it's close. It's I mean, a big damn. script. It's, I, I admire it's, that. It's, it's it's up there, right? Okay, and I'm still like it's pretty much done, but I've been like kind of going back over it a few times, adding here, taking away there. Mm -hmm. Kind of stuff. Um, I just I got yes. I got a high functioning medium. He he's going to be involved. He's oh, writing. Nice. He's writing a because it's more about the second game than the first game, right? But I do mention the first game, which I recently bought and played a little bit of for the first time, and I kind of am not a big fan of it. Um, <clears throat> I think it does yes. a lot of cool stuff, and I think that it has yeah. a lot of cool elements, but I think it does a lot of things, and it never does one thing good. Um, oh, that's a fair analysis. I also think the gameplay is terrible, and somehow the gameplay is worse than the game that came out three, like two or three years prior that the same studio made, which was Chronicles of Riddick Butcher Bay, Escape from Butcher oh, Bay, which has way better gameplay than The Darkness does, but it's made by the same studio. I don't well, get it. Around, um, yeah. You know, and that's fine, but... It, it when the gameplay for a shooter is not good, it doesn't really make me want to play the shooter, right? Exactly. Whereas something the that the Darkness Two does really well is the shooting over everything else. Like, it, I think everything else falls together and is good, but the shooting in Darkness Two is phenomenal. Like the combat is amazing, some of the best I've seen in any shooter, right? So, I think that that's a big reason why I like that more. But I, I mentioned Darkness One and kind of my criticisms towards it while still giving it the respect that it deserves as well as that I, you know, appreciate what they did and without it there would be no darkness too. But Actually, that I so was just going to say I think Yeah. So so basically yeah, Medium's works. part that he's writing is going to be a more positive counterpoint to my 
slightly negative take on the first game. So he's going to kind of come in and be like, hey, he's going to be the guy who did like the first game, right? And kind of give us a little bit oh, of a counterpoint. Go. So that way we have a fair yeah, opinion nice. out there. I don't hurt anybody's feelings. Contrast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know we've no. got to be very delicate yeah. about people's feelings no but you know i i think it's going to be an interesting angle <laughs> to have in mean. there and this video is pretty between the script and the idea started about two years ago um and i mean i was able to get a little bit of a text interview with sheldon carter who's the head of uh digital extremes but he's oh, a busy cool. guy. Wow. I mean, they do run Warframe, and he's, like, released a book and so on. So I got a couple answers from him, and that's cool. I mean, the fact that he even answered one Something. is impressive. So um, so I got a little bit of that to add in. I've got a bunch of interviews that I've got, you know, stockpiled yeah. and other information. So it's going to be it's gonna be a video that's going to take a lot of time. And then I also have to Outstanding. kind of work around the lack of experience on PC editors. So... There's oh, that don't worry, too. Same boat. I have a supplies video that is now apparently I only realized yesterday has been sitting ready to go. I interviewed the art director, this entire thing. I was super excited. And now that's three months old. And I'm like, my God, <laughs> I actually Red, thought I published it. And I never ready did. to go as in you finished the entire video. Oh no, I have all the oh, assets, okay. all the footage, all the recordings, all the everything. Okay. Um, I just never edited. I never I put the thing you, together. You had it edited and ready to go, and everything has been sitting there. <laughs> no, so the last edit, the last edit. He's like, it's he's like, I have it right there on YouTube. I thought I hit publish, but no, it's just <laughs> sitting there. The Can whole you imagine? Time. Can you imagine? <laughs> that would have been funny, Fun but yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, um. Is there anything that you want to kind of tease? You said you got your Forgive Me Father thing coming soon, right? Oh, shit. You know what? Thanks for bringing that up. I think for me, uh, Forgive Me Hopefully Father is one of the better games. get this out before that video. Yeah, it's no stress, buddy. But I mean, oh, at okay. the end of the day, Forgive Me Father is one of those better games I've played uh, in recent times. I feel it didn't get as much love as it should have now that I've played so the game several times. Yeah, it, it has so much in it that I think was remarkable. So many layers, so much replayability that I think it got a little, it got some crap for one little thing in it, and I'll cover it in my review, but it got some crap for one little thing that I think dominated the conversation, mm -hmm. which I think was a bit unnecessary because it's a really great game. And it's a After really cool I for what it is. bought it for pretty cheap, um, yeah. as soon as I started playing it, it reminded me of the original Doom. Um, I'm yeah. very much so not a fan of Doom 2, and we could talk about that at another time but oh, i really that's a think whole podcast episode <laughs> yeah I, I think that the original doom is a classic will always be a classic and yep. it's an easy pick up and play game um that anybody could play and it ages like very well um oh yes. especially as it's been remastered over the years you know to improve visual mm. fidelity and so on but forgive me father reminded me a lot of that like a lot and so i had to yeah. I had to tell you about it, right? And mm. I told you about it. You did it. actually. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, man, this reminds me a lot of Doom. And you were like, ooh, you know, I gotta I gotta check that out. And oh, such a good game. And yeah. it does so much well. I think it oh, yeah. tries to exper it experiments with a lot of ideas, like it's uh RPG light elements mm -hmm. with uh the, yeah, skill, with the tree skill tree and things like and, that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I think on a blind run, you're going to struggle. I know I did, but I think overall, it's just got so much replayability, some fun ideas, great art style, and the the gameplay itself is quite done very well. So I think it's okay. Like, you're funny, you mentioned with Darkness, right? I think because it does its core gameplay really well, which is shooting things, I think yeah. it's okay for it to be meh on the RPG side or on the storytelling side, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, I think it has great gameplay I'm, and it, everything else is like the serviceable, thing. but it's, yeah, it has great gameplay. Exactly, and, and I think what's great about it is that now we're sitting with Forgive Me Father 2, which I'm hoping releases this year, maybe unlikely, but would it be cool if it did? But Guess we'll nah, find we'll out see. Realms Deep. We'll find out in Realms Deep, won't we? Um, but I think overall, the, my review kind of speaks uh, very much to the core gameplay mechanics and things like that. But kind of what we get out of games like Forgive Me Father and like Doom. And basically it becomes this power fantasy. But unlike Doom, I think Forgive Me Father really speaks to more about what we give up rather than what we're trying to gain at the end of the day. Which is an interesting little tweak on the yeah. idea. Remember I told you I had another whole video which I've now written for Reload Magazine. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. I'll turn into a video by the way. I've gotten permission. But that now, video is that, will come out. Is that who, who the one that was going to be based around the art style specifically? 
Uh, that evolved so much. Yeah, so oh, okay. that changed from being art style to being dude, completely something else entirely. But I can't wait. That's more of an artistic video, in my opinion. That's my favorite video, and I can't wait to produce it. Um, but the review is a review is a review, right? Um, but this other video, one day, if it ever gets published, that'll be the end of Forgive Me Father for me until the sequel comes out. And then I'll do it all over again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm excited about the sequel being in Unreal 5. I mean, the potential that that oh. game has to improve upon what it did with the first one is insane. Oh, yeah. Visually, gameplay-wise, story, and so on. I guarantee it. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, the second one is going to polish everything. All the lessons they learned in the first one, they're going to apply in the second. And I think it's going to be a great game. All right, man. Well, I've loved talking to you today. And as I Dude. always do. And I'll be looking forward to the next stream, as always. <laughs> And Dude. you know, I, 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 it was awesome, man. It was awesome talking to you. It's been it was so awesome. great. Um, so it, it's been so great. Thank you so much for having me. And no dude, problem, we're gonna do it again sometime, just casually. For eh? Sure, sure, we will. Um, yeah. I'll talk to you later, man. Have a good one. Talk to you soon, my brother. You take care. Cheers.